Welcome, Jennifer Muller Thank from you. CBL. CBL is the Dutch Association of Retailers, and Jennifer is going to explain to us what bananas have to do with the living wage. Exactly. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, Jennifer, last year uh, a rather special initiative was launched um, in which Dutch supermarkets committed to pursuing living wages in the banana sector. I would love to hear more about um, this commitment and what it entailed and the role of CBL in this process. Yes. Well, in November 2019, 14 Dutch retailers signed the living wage banana commitments together with CBL and IDH. And the momentum for the commitment was created by the International Responsible Business Conduct Agreement on food products, where we as CBL are also part of. And the goal for the signing retailers is to predominantly sell bananas that are sourced from plantations that pay a living wage to their workers. And to calculate that living wage, we are using the salary matrix tool by IDH. Uh, over the last year, we have been working on gaining insights in the gap between the current remuneration and the living wage. And from 2021 on, we want to increase that gap by at least 10% per year. And the main aim is to close that gap in 2025 by at least 75%. And as CBL, uh, we are supporting uh, the supermarkets wherever needed, wherever possible, and we are trying to facilitate uh, the process in the journey that uh, we went through uh, so far. Fantastic. That's really impressive, closing the gap by 75% by 2025. Um, given the courageous nature of this project, um, there, there were bound to be challenges and learning along the way. Um, can you share some of the key learnings and perhaps some of the tools that you found useful? Yes, yeah, there are definitely learnings. Uh, I'll elaborate on two. Uh, the first one is that it's really important to use tools that have already been developed and to build forward on work that has already been done. For us, over the last year, using the salary matrix tool was really helpful. It gave us good guidelines and a good method on how to work. And what was also helpful is that before we launched this commitment, uh, some of the players in the supply chain had already been doing some work on living wage in the banana chain. And that really paved the way for the retailers to start making this explicit commitment. The second learning is that uh, it's really important to collaborate and to explicitly communicate with all partners involved. And this may sound cliche, but I do want to mention it because I think it's an essential condition for success. And naturally, this relates to um, collaborating with the supply chain partners and making sure that everyone's aligned. But it's also about communicating and aligning with the retailers themselves. Um, what really helped is that uh, we had a numerical target, so we know where we're going to work towards uh, from the start. But there are also so many other conditions you need to talk about. For example, what do you want to report? Uh, which tools do we use? How do we monitor the process? So alignment is really important there as well. And it's also the case for the retailers internally, because we see that within this project, the sustainability department and the buying department work closely together. So it's important that they are on the same page as well. And it's not only about collaboration with the supply chain partners. There are also other relevant stakeholders that are really necessary to include. And what really helped us is that Rainforest Alliance and Fair Trade, so the certification schemes, are also working on living wage in the banana chain. Because we believe that to really institutionalize and really integrate such a topic in the chain, those certification schemes need to be on board as well. And maybe a last actor I also want to mention uh, relates to the local circumstances. We've learned it's key to know about the local circumstances of your chain, especially if we will be working on projects to close the gap. They will really need to know the societal and political circumstances. And we are therefore very happy that we are currently engaging with the Dutch trade unions and hopefully through their 
worldwide network, mm -hmm. we can start that local dialogue on the ground. Beautiful. You've talked already extensively on collaboration and the different stakeholders concerned. Jennifer, what was the process CBL followed to engage with those stakeholders and get them working on the same target? Okay. Well, the choice of starting with living wage in the banana chain, that was already kind of a mutual, natural decision uh, among the supply chain partners. Uh, the retailers uh, have, together with their supply chain partners, worked for quite some time now on making the chain more sustainable, for example, through certification. And this really kind of was the next natural step uh, to focus on. Uh, a lot of conversations have taken place, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. between all the different actors involved. And the key element in that, I would say, is trust. Trust and faith that you're all in this journey together, in our case, for the next four or five years to come, and that we're really committed to that shared goal. And that's especially important because the most impactful part of our project still has to come. Because once we have identified that living wage gap, we have to close it. And we have to start rolling out projects. And therefore, it's really important that we know we are going to do this together and that we all want to achieve that same shared goal. Beautiful. Um, and then finally, just to draw on your wisdom following this experience, what would be, Jennifer, your advice for retailers who want to also pursue an agenda of a living wage? I'd say make a start and start reaching out to players that can help you with that. Firstly, start looking for a third party that could help you with operationalizing the concept of living wage by offering tools and methods. For example, what we did with IDH. Secondly, start reaching out to your close suppliers and start discussing your ideas and maybe see if you could come up with a shared goal you all want to work towards. And thirdly, also very important, is reach out to retailers, to other retailers that are also thinking about this topic or maybe have even already started with some projects. Um, because we've learned over the last year that it's really a process of learning by doing and trial and error. And therefore, sharing experiences is so important. Um, and it's also important because if you want to have impact, we need leverage, leverage in the chain. And we create that leverage if as many retailers as possible worldwide start working on living wage. So I would say make a start, put that dot there on the horizon and start working with projects that really make a substantial impact that matter in your chain. That's what my advice would be. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for joining us. That's very clear.